Hi, I'm James Wiebe with CRU. I wanted to show you some of the configuration options. I've clicked open the Configure tab, and then below that you see that we've got seven different options. System, Network, Clone, Image, Erase, Hash, and Naming. We're going to look at each one of them in turn, starting with the system. Under System, we can select the format of the drive. Uh, all of the popular uh, hard drive uh, types are there, I should say operating system types from EXT2 through NTFS. If we're running a single drive, we can choose whether or not we want to verify it. If we're running a mirror drive, we can choose whether or not we want to mirror uh, the first, the second, or both of the drives. That lets us save time. If we're doing a clone in an image, we can select either or both. Uh, if we want to log info, we can choose whether or not we want to do that, on, off, before, and after. Uh, a lot of people like to do both, so we can capture the state of the hard drive before and after we do something to it. Under hash type, uh, you can select MD5 or SHA-1 or both. If you select both, you're going to take a performance hit. Uh, there's some other things, too. Stealth mode, I want to show that to you. Uh, in just a moment. HTML logging allows us to create an HTML file in addition to an XML file uh, for our logs. But stealth mode is something that allows us to turn all of the lights and the front panel of Ditto off. This is useful for people who literally want to be able to work in the dark with uh, night vision goggles uh, and infrared flashlight. Let's go ahead and commit stealth mode. You'll see that the panel turned off. Now I'm going to uncheck it and turn the panel back on. We think that that's going to have some great value for Ditto, especially down the road, as we add additional functionality into Ditto. Let's take a look at the Network Configuration tab. Under Network Configuration, we have the uh, ability to configure Ditto both on the source and the network side. Under the source side, <coughs> you can set it up with a static IP, or with the automatic uh, DHCP for uh, IP address serving. Uh, you also have the ability to allow or disallow block remote accessibility. This in essence lets you be silent on your uh, source network uh, so that uh, you cannot be detected. On the destination side, uh, we've got quite a few options there including the ability to act as a server or as a client with either a static or DHCP IP address serving. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, other uh, options there as well for setting uh, IP address and uh, submap masks. Uh, you can also name your Ditto. This is really uh, important. Uh, as a result of this, uh, for instance, this particular Ditto is called Ditto C2. We could name it anything we want. We could associate the name with an investigator or with a case. Generally speaking, you'll assign a name and keep it there. Uh, in this case, once we create the name, it'll appear on the control panel of the Ditto every time you turn it on, so you know which unit you're using. The Clone tab uh, has a limited number of options. Uh, but uh, we're going to focus on HPAs and DCOs. HPAs and DCOs allow us to control the size of the drive as seen by its host. And that's critical when we're cloning because uh, there might be a hidden area that we want to bypass so we can get all of the information from the drive. So uh, you have to make a decision as to which way you want to go once you do it. Uh, you can set the clone up to work with HPAs and DCAs, DCOs that way. Um, also, if you're working with uh, cloning, you have to make a decision with what you want to do with the extra space that's left on your destination drive. This button here called Reset HPA After Fill is the one that downsizes the drive so that the output drive will match the source drive in capacity. Uh, under Advanced Settings, uh, you can manipulate the buffer size, and you can control the behavior as to what happens when a bad sector is encountered. Under imaging, uh, we have the selection of whether or not we want to do an EO1 or a DD image. Uh, and then under each of those is a number of settings that allow us to control whether or not, for instance, we're doing a compression, uh, what file format we're using. There's a lot of options there. Once again, the treatment of how we handle HPAs and DCOs. Uh, under DD, we see a few of the same things, such as the HPA and DCO treatment. 
Let's go back to EO1. Uh, we see that there's some advanced uh, settings that have to do with uh, the behavior of the software uh, in uh, handling the data on the source drive uh, and what happens when a read error occurs. On the DD side, the advanced settings just allow us to control the buffer size and once again to exit if we want it to when a bad sector is encountered. The racing function, uh, ditto, can act like a drive eraser. It's got all that functionality built into it, but uh, when we are erasing a drive, we can make a decision as to whether or not we just want to clear the partition table all the way through a clear sanitized purge. Whatever we want to do, secure erase. We can do that with ditto. Um, also, you have to pick which type of behavior you want for HPAs and DCOs, whether or not you just want to know that they're there or if you want to unblock them, you can do that. So we can do that with erasing. Um, beside each one of these is information buttons, although I haven't made a big deal of it. If we click on an information button, it's going to give us a little bit of additional data as to what's associated with that. And that's useful here because we might want to remember just what each one of these erase functions means. Uh, for instance, a DOD sanitize, it reminds us that it writes it with an AA pattern, then a complement, then another pattern. Okay, hashing, pretty simple there. The hashing function just allows us to set the buffer size. Under naming, we have the ability to create our destination uh, uh, directory and file names. Uh, it starts with a timestamp, and from that we can add on a case number, description, evidence number, investigator. We can add on a multiplicity. So for instance, we could have a case number plus an evidence number plus the source drive model type, and that would all become part of our director name. Same thing with the file name, same basic principles. The ditto gives the investigator the ability to configure uh, all kinds of things that are important in the use and operation of the ditto. It's a lot of flexibility. It gives you the capability of doing exactly what you want to do with the unit.